Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Good morning, everybody. You'll <laughs> see an abnormally large number of Starbucks products on the thing. It's 7 a.m. in Los Angeles, but it's Oscar nomination day. Thanks for joining us. Also here is John Schnepp. What's going on? I, I got out of my uh, cryogenic sleep chamber. I've been borrowing from John's. Just <laughs> testing it out. It's called the John's 9000. It kind of works. Also, here's Jeremy John's. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, it's Oscar. <clears throat> it's good. And uh, cry you know it's going to be awesome when I wake yeah. up in the year 3079. <laughs> also, here, Perry Nemiroff. <laughs> Sorry. I'm ready. No, it really, I'm so happy to be here. Mm -hmm. It's freaking Oscar nomination day. Award season is well underway. I'm pumped. Also here, Mark Ellis. I'm still away from that friendly white powder I took last night. <laughs> Fun dip. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it is, uh, it's that time of year. It, it's the Oscar nominations have dropped. Uh, probably Other than the Oscar day itself, it is the most important day on the movie calendar was today. And... We're going to talk all about the Oscar nominations that came out. We're going to majorly, mostly stick to the major categories. Uh, so let's run into We're going to talk about the films that got nominated, the films that didn't get nominated, what we think should win, what we think should have got in there, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. And we are going to save time for your live Twitter questions at the end of the show. So don't start firing them in yet. It's a little bit early, but we'll give you a heads up when it's time to start doing that. So let's get into it, and let's start with the films that got nominated for Best Picture. Remember... The way the rules are now, anywhere between five and ten pictures can get nominated. So, Ashley, what are the films that got nominated? For Best Picture, La La Land, Moonlight, Manchester by the Sea, Arrival, Lion, Hidden Figures, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, and Fences. Uh, amazing list of films this year. Obviously, my number one film of the year was Hacksaw Ridge. It was my, I, I think it was the best. So I was very, very happy to see that get in there. Mark Ellis, any one of these films pop on here that you're surprised made it onto the list? And, and we should note, nine films got nominated, so it was a possibility of ten, but nine got in. Any surprises to you? Uh, nothing really surprising to me. The biggest surprise of the Best Picture nominations is that there's nine of them and not ten, because there were so many great movies that came out this year that a tenth film, which they had room for, did not get nominated. I'm glad to see Lion made it in there just in the nick of time, because a lot of people saw that movie later yeah. than some of these other ones that we're talking about. La La Land and Moonlight would obviously be my two favorites to win Best Picture, but none of those I'm like, oh, that needs to go off. I just think another one should have gotten on. What about you, Perry? Obviously, I could find something that I like that could have stolen that 10th position. Mm. In terms of predictions, though, this is kind of how I thought it was going to shake out. This is almost identical to the PGA nomination list, minus Deadpool. And <laughs> even though I was holding out hope, I really did want it to sneak in there and get something just for, because I liked the movie, and it would have been exciting to see a movie like that get nominated. It didn't, and I'm not surprised, but damn am I happy that La La Land <laughs> has tied the record. 14 nominations. Oh, that's huge for my number one movie of the year. I'm so pumped. And you know what's funny is that when we were here in the studio watching this happen, yes, we got up that early. It, <laughs> it was almost like they left a pregnant pause after the ninth movie, and we're all waiting, like, are they saving it for the end? <laughs> is there going to be a tenth? It was like waiting for a post credit scene that didn't happen. Ugh. You know, it's, it's an incredible list. Uh, obviously... The one thing to me, I do not believe Arrival deserve a nomination. Uh, it's not a terrible film, but I, I believe it is the most overrated film of the year. I, I, I just, I think it's the most overrated film of the year. Ouija Origin of Evil over Arrival. I was probably, that you? yes. Okay. But especially when you consider there are a couple films, and you and I were talking about this uh, before the show started. There are a couple of films that are missing off this. Look, Love La La Land, Love Moonlight, Love Manchester by the Sea, Lion, Hidden Figures, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Fences. They're all great. Couple of ones that are missing though that I found pretty interesting. One was Sing Street. Absolutely. Uh, Sing Street, I think, would have fit in very well in here. Now, before anybody says, well, why didn't they give it the 10th spot? Remember, the Oscars don't actually decide that we're going to do 10 this year. If you want to go back and watch our crash course on how the Oscar nominations work, you understand it's actually a mathematical formula, and they just see how many does it work out to be. This year, the formula worked out to be nine. Um, I would have bumped Arrival for Sing Street. I would have bumped Arrival for also Edge of Seventeen. Edge of Seventeen is a film that I thought could have got in there for a Best Picture nomination. I thought Deadpool might have had an outside shot just because it was nominated for the direct for the Producers Guild. I mean, so I thought maybe it had a chance. It didn't get in there. But overall, this is a 
wonderful list. I would probably say the favorites. Uh, the favorite is probably still La La Land. Um, but I, you know what? I believe more and more. I, I think there's some momentum for Hacksaw Ridge. I think momentum, Hacksaw Ridge has an outside chance. Anyway, what stands out to you about the Best Picture nomination? So we're not talking about what's not on the list yet. We'll you come can, back to yeah. That. You can talk All about right. what's not on well, the list. Well, I did come repping, guys. I came <laughs> repping. Uh, so that being said, I, f I feel like I'm going to come back to the argument because, dude, that 10th spot could have gone to, to somebody. I did, but... Okay, so here we go. Um, it's early in the morning, folks. Bear with me. Uh, if you look at the list, it's actually a pretty on-the-par list for what I thought was going to get nominated. I am so, 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 so... I can't even describe how pumped I am that Arrival was nominated. Oh, my God. I am so jacked that Arrival was nominated. I tried to balance me out? Is I that what it is? I couldn't be more jacked than if Deadpool himself got nominated. That is how jacked about Arrival at Holy sh... Oh, speaking of which, what's uh, another one that's really good is fucking Arrival. I am so pumped that Arrival got nominated, John. It's crazy that I, I, I just, I, I'm beside myself. Uh, I am really surprised, though, in all honesty, that uh, Hacksaw Ridge is on it. I wanted it to be on it. I agree with you. It's one of the best of the year, but the Mel Gibson stigma, I didn't know how long that, that was going to last. So I thought it was going to be one of those, oh, it should have been, but wasn't. And we'll, again, visit that uh, conversation a little later. But uh, I'm glad Hacksaw Ridge is on. Almost as glad I as, uh, as I am that Arrival is on the list. Well, I was <laughs> expecting Hacksaw to get on the, on the best picture so. list. Wasn't so sure about the director thing, but we'll get to that in yeah. a second. Schnepp, what are some of the things that stand out to you about the nominee list? Uh, that it's such a well-rounded group of films. Like, yeah. you really li literally have a little bit of everything that makes up what's what's so great about cinema. So, to me, I think, like, if you haven't seen any of these films, see all nine of them, because they're all incredible. Um, I, myself, also am very happy to see a science fiction film nominated called Arrival. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, that's just me. But uh, another one that sticks out, Moonlight. Obviously, Hell or High Water. Those are films that are like, they're very small independent films, but I'm super glad to see them represented because they're amazing films. Yeah, and there's, there's, uh, there's no movie on that list is like any of the other movies. Right. There's a lot of diversity yeah. in there, both when you look at the cast, but you also look at the content of the films. To add to your point, where I think Sing Street definitely should have been nominated. Uh, and in that 10th spot, I think uh, A Monster Calls could have been nominated. Edge of 17, like you said, Nocturnal Animals left off that list. The Witch, even, is something oh, yeah. that I thought could have snuck in there. 13 hours. No, so there's a lot of movies I think you could have put in. Let there. me let me put the pressure on you though, because remember, once again, it was the math that determined how many nominees right. there were. So we're mentioning a, a bunch of us up here mentioning films that maybe should have got nominated, but to do that, something's got to get bumped off the list. Mm -hmm. So let me put it to you first, Mark. We're, we're, we're saying things like, you and I both agree, Sing Street would have been nice to get a nomination, Edge of 17, things like that. But, you know, in order for that to happen, something's got to get bumped. What do you bump off this list to make room for those? For Sing Street, I would take damn near anything off the list. Anything that's not named. Oh, Lala no, no, Land no. You got you to gotta pick one. You gotta then pick I'm going to either take Hacksaw Ridge or Hidden Figures is my, would be my last two that made it in. So I would either take Hacksaw Ridge or Hidden Figures off the list. Oh, you, Perry, which one oh, would you bump off the list to make room for films that you thought should have been nominated? That is a terrible, terrible question, because I think this is the list that we should have ended up with. Right. Ooh. <laughs> I Ooh. know, right? It's really easy for us. To I end. don't like I, this I'm game. Guilty of this. It's so easy <laughs> for us to go, well, this should have been nominated, too. Well, then what do you bump? What do you, what do you take Strictly off the list? Strictly based on my personal preferences and just entertainment value, odds of me watching and rewatching these movies... I would take fences off, and I would put Sing Street in that spot. Mm. Um, I well, obviously, I would take Arrival off, but I would also probably, although it's amazing <laughs> film, Lion, Lion's probably the next one I take off to to make room for Sing Street and um, uh, Edge of Seventeen. Mm -hmm. I'd probably make room for Sing Street and Edge of Seventeen by removal by removing uh, Arrival and Lion, although. You know, Lion is fantastic. I'm glad it's there too, but that's a tough one. Which which films do you bump? Uh, yeah, there are three on here that I haven't seen. So I mean, by I, I can't bump them just on the basis of mm. well, I haven't seen it. That's just kind of unfair. But of what I have seen, I, I mean, and I I feel like I'm going to drop every jaw at the table. I mean, I'd I'd bump Hell or High Water for Deadpool for sure. I just would. Just in terms of entertainment factor for me, I'd be like, nah, I, that, that's the one that I would bump if I had to make room for Deadpool. So that's what I'd do. What about you, Schnepp? Jeremy, I thought we were friends. Oh, uh, we are friends. <laughs> you know why? Arrival, Schnepp. That's why. Arrival. All right. You, you're my friend again. Um, I, would, I would have to put in Edge of 17 over Lion. But once again, I think all of these are like what like we're saying. They're, it's such a well-rounded... Uh, you know, storytelling, different kinds of stories. I'd love to see Nocturnal Animals, too, nominated, just because it was so 
effing weird. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not losing any sleep out, over right. any of these. Like, I'm happy Hidden Figures and Hacksaw Ridge are in there. I think they deserve to be recognized. I just think Sing Street should have gotten something. You know, it's really cool. I remember when it was 2010, I believe, is when the Academy was, uh, went from five Best Picture nominees to a potential of ten. And, you know, there was an argument, and a valid argument, that's saying, why bother doing that? Because, you know, the number six, seven, eight, nine, ten films, they don't have a chance of winning. True. But just for Best Picture, I love the fact that a film like Lion is going to get this kind of recognition. I like the fact that Fences is going to get this kind of recognition. Because let's face it, like those are films that wouldn't have probably made it into the just five. Right. And I like that they're get, getting that recognition now. Okay, right, let's move on to the next category. We're going to talk about a pretty hotly contested one this year in Best Director. Ashley, who are our nominees for Best Director? Damien Chazelle, La La Land. Barry Jenkins, Moonlight. Kenneth Lonergan, Manchester by the Sea. Denny Villeneuve, Arrival. Mel Gibson, Hacksaw Ridge. All right. Now, this was the one that I think was the most surprising to me. Yeah. I thought Hacksaw Ridge would get on the list for, for best picture nominee. Actually, I thought it was a pretty safe bet that it would get there. I did not think Hollywood was ready to nominate Mel Gibson again. I didn't think they were ready to do it yet. For me personally, strictly speaking, as his performance as a director this year... I'm thrilled because I hand him this trophy right now. I, that's what I would do. What he did with Hacksaw Ridge as a director, he made it incredibly emotional while incredibly stressful, amazingly exciting. He showed a dude who, who believed in nonviolence whatsoever and people who very much believed in, in violence for the right reason and didn't undermine either of them. He actually elevated both of them to show both sides of those coins that you'd think are completely opposed to each other, yet he elevated them both to be heroes at the same time. And it was just, an inc the fact that it was a true story just blows my mind. It was, what you had to do as a director to make that story work on screen, the way that it worked on screen was absolutely flooring to me. I'm so glad he's on there. I would give him the Academy Award right now for the job he did. Uh, I would take off uh, Denny Villeneuve for Arrival. Uh, <laughs> actually, you, know what? you know what? Here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. We often say, how do you have a, pi a, a movie nominated for Best Picture and not recognize the director? I don't think Arrival should be nominated for Best Picture. That's obvious. I would nominate Den Denny Villeneuve because I think the only reason that movie is good was because of the way he told that story. I don't think inherently the story is that great, but the way he told the story is amazing. So I may shock a lot of you say, I actually, yeah, I, I understand why he's on that list. What about you? Uh, what do you think? What stands out to you on the Best Director oh, Yeah, I, I'm with you on the, the Mel Gibson thing. Because I was like, I mean, okay, so here's Mel Gibson. Here we go. So some years ago, this guy had a really dark dip in his in the world of his girlfriend's answering machine, right? He said some stuff. I'm very sure he, he's like, ah, darn it, she had a, she had a recorder on. Uh, I, w I would like to think, and I would hope, it's been years. How long has it been? Seven years? It's, it's been a while. It's I mean, he's had while. multiple incidents yeah, right, of, yeah, yeah. of, of well, saying stuff that he should not yeah, have. Yeah, right, right. But it, it, it's been a, f a few years going back. I'd like to think this dude did the Doctor Strange thing. He went, he found some zen, he bettered himself. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go make a good movie. He made a good movie. It really does show objectivity. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. The fact that he's nominated where it's like, you know... There's a chip on the shoulder for this guy, but the guy made a really good film, so he's going to get nominated for it. I'd like, I like I always say, like in terms of it's totally different scenario, but like split, I like to see as a Shyamalan comeback. So I, I love a good <laughs> comeback. I would like to think Mel Gibson's been like, you know what? I've bettered myself, and I'm a different guy now. Who knows? But uh, the guy made a kick-ass film. He made a great film, and like you said, it's hard to find the drama and the personal story and the exciting action. Somehow they work together to not... They were compartmentalized for the hemispheres of the movie they were in, but they elevated each other. You yeah. know, that one fed off of the other in some sort of self-sustaining wheel. I thought, I mean, that is great directing in that the dude totally uh, deserves to be nominated for it. Uh, Chazelle for La La Land, uh, I love the fact that when I saw the nominations, like Chazelle, I was like, oh, I've been saying it right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been on the fence. I haven't done. Um, but there are shots in that, in that movie. I'm like, I don't know if it was one shot. It may have been. It may not have been. I don't actually know. And that's, a, again, and a mark for a great director because making a musical and making it work in this day and age is super hard to do. So, uh, and uh, of course, for uh, what was it, Vill uh, 
the, the Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah, that, him. <laughs> um, Arri- I'm going to call him the Arrival director sure. because I, I agree with you. I loved Arrival, and his way of telling the story is a big reason why I loved Arrival, and I loved the content in it. I felt he told the content well, so those three for sure are the ones that I'm uh, I'm all amped about. Snap, what about you? What stands out to you? Well, Mel Gibson's pure cinematic film called Apocalypto is right. the one that Crazy I good. think w- should have gotten nominated and possibly even won. And that's still my favorite film of his. Uh, for me, I think Chazelle and Denis, uh, those are my two picks, Arrival and La La Land. It's really between those two. But I think La La Land is going to be the one that wins. But I, I, you know, once again, I really loved Arrival. So, What do you think? I'm pretty happy with this list. Mel Gibson is obviously the surprise here. I really did think the director of Lion, uh, Garth Davis, was going to sneak in there because he got the big uh, DGA nomination and he got the first-time director one, too. So I thought he was going to get that fifth spot. Between Gibson and Scorsese, though, I'm kind of not surprised that Mel Gibson got it because Hacksaw Ridge is definitely... I I would say more people at this point have seen Hacksaw Ridge than they have Silence. And... You know, I think he deserves it. I loved Hacksaw Ridge, too. However, I would not hand the award over to him. Surprise, surprise. I would hand it to Damien Chazelle if I could. (laughs) However, if Damien Chazelle does not get it, I would like to see Denis Villeneuve or Barry Jenkins get it. And cool fact about Barry Jenkins getting nominated right now, this makes him the first African-American writer-director to score a nomination for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay. And that's freaking huge. Nice. Moonlight is incredible. So if anyone out there has not seen it, please bump that to the top of your list right now. One, of the, he, one thing that should be said about Barry Jenkins and the job he did with Moonlight, we're talking about incredible jobs as a director, we're talking about difficult jobs of, as a director, One of the toughest things to do is to get your audience to not only sympathize with, but put themselves in the shoes of somebody else who lives completely outside Mm -hmm. of their context. And when you look at a movie like Moonlight, you're going about as far outside of a lot of average moviegoers' context as you can, and yet he found a way to tell that story in such a way that had the audience, regardless of the walk of life you're in, empathizing and identifying with the characters on screen. And the fact that he was able to find a way to do that is mind blowing. So I was I was thrilled to see him get a nomination for best director. Anyway, but what about you, Mark? It doesn't take me too long to put things in a sports framework, and this is one of my favorite matchups of the Oscars because it's a clear clash of styles where you have a lot of filmmaking techniques, which is obviously where I lean with Damien Chazelle. But another thing that filmmakers can be great at is getting an emotional reaction out of me, and yeah. that's what Moonlight was able to do. Manchester by the Sea was able to do that, and to a certain extent, Arrival was able to do that too. And Arrival actually might have been the best marriage of the two of filmmaking technique and also just really drawing raw emotion out of somebody but I think a lot of Arrival success is due to cinematography I was really happy to see Bradford Young get nominated because if we don't highlight that category in this show I think he's going to be the front runner in that as far as best director goes I think it's going to be Chazelle's award but I think Barry Jenkins is right up there and Denny's not too far behind there's one person I think should have been on the list it's not it would have been Martin Scorsese for Silence I think maybe you can get I don't want to kick Kenneth Lonergan out because he did an amazing job with Manchester by the Sea, but I think I, I think Scorsese earned some more recognition, and I think Tom Ford might earn some recognition too for Nocturnal mm. Animals. That was a pretty singular movie experience. Mm. You mentioned Bradford Young. He's also the first African American cinematographer to get nominated for that Oscar. All right, that's great. The Han Solo movie is in good yeah. hands. Yes, it Definitely. is. Definitely. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the acting categories. Let's start with the nominees for Meryl Streep. I mean, Best Actress. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Stone, La La Land, Natalie Portman, Jackie, Isabel Huppert, Elle, Meryl Streep, Florence Foster Jenkins, and Ruth Naga, Loving. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. For uh, Florence Jennings Foster, Boo Baker the Fourth movie, okay? <laughs> I was late to the party. I did not see that film when it came out. I only saw it like, like literally just like a month or two ago. I finally got around to watching it. Because the movie didn't look all that good, to be honest. Meryl Streep is hella good in that movie. Like, like it's, it's, it's vintage Meryl mm. Streep. She is insanely good in that movie. And so it's not one of the... This is, you know, nobody saw this movie. So I'm sure there were a lot of people at home when Meryl Streep's name came up and just went, just Meryl Streep again? If you haven't seen the movie, just trust me, she deserved a nomination for it. She's just that good in it. However, this is Emma Stone's year. 
Uh, I am not as enamored with La La Land as most people. It's, it was in my top 10 of the year list. I believe it deserved Best Picture nomination. It does so many things beautifully and marvelous. I'm not the biggest La La Land fan in the world, although I, I think it's brilliant. But Emma Stone, it's, this movie was the culmination of her evolution as a performer, I think. Like, she brought everything into this movie. Like, the singing and the dancing, yes, but the pure acting in it was mind-boggling. Uh, so, yes, all the nominees were great in this. Uh, Ruth Negan Loving was fabulous. Natalie Portman was obviously brilliant and Jackie, mm -hmm. but I think it's Emma Stone's year, so that's the one I'm, I'm looking to. What about you, Schnepp? Um, I would have to, I didn't get a chance to see Loving or Elle yet, so those are on my list to see. So it's hard to make a full gauge because oh and also didn't see florence foster jenkins i've never even heard of a it. lot of people didn't see <laughs> yeah, i was like yeah. when did this come out oh five, five months grand. ago or something damn yeah it came out in like um, august yeah but it's on my yeah. list you got to keep a list so um <laughs> of the two of the films that i've seen out of these five i would have to give it to emma stone i found jackie to be a really hard film to get through i just did not like the movie i think uh natalie did a good job portraying Onassis, but at the same time, I felt it was a forced script. I didn't like the rapport that she had with the reporter. Just so many things felt like kind of like didn't gel with me. While La La Land was really a joy from beginning to end, and Emma Stone is one of the reasons her and Ryan Gosling was why that film was so much fun to watch and enjoy. So I'd have to give it to Emma Stone. What about you? Yeah, man. Um, well, like we've all said, Emma Stone's year for sure. And you guys can't see this. Every time I mention La La Land, Perry smiles. Like, you can't <laughs> see that. But every time it's I beaming. say, yeah. yeah, and La La Land, she's like, oh. It's, it's like it, it hits you at your soul. I love that. Uh, but no, I mean, Emma Stone's always been a great actress. I, ever since I saw her in that Zombieland movie, I was like, that kid's going places, friend. She's going places. But, uh, you know, you have to now, think about the prospect of all right, so La La Land was all about the chemistry between, between Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. So if Emma Stone wins, is Ryan Gosling going to win and vice versa? That's what I got to think about now. But uh, uh, yeah, Emma Stone for sure. I, I'd like to see her walk away this year with the Oscar. Uh, you know, I like to refer to Emma Stone as my co-star in The Rocker. I, I was an extra. I was, I was having an extra in The Rocker. Wow. But that's, yeah, that's what, what is The Rocker? Please explain I have explain not this. heard it's, anyone reference that, that movie in so long. Yes, it is. It's, <laughs> it's the one with Rain Wilson, Wilson <laughs> as an aging rock and oh, roller yeah. uh, who starts a band with a bunch of teenage kids. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and Emma Stone was one of them. <laughs> Co-starring John Campier. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I'm like, I got that reference. You I see me. That. You see. There's one. There's one shot where you can see me in the audience going. That's my part of All of a sudden, rentals on Amazon for the rock. Like, What's this weird spike of 463 uh, rentals? Not, like, a, not a very, not a very good oh, movie wow. at all. Anyway, Mark Ellis, what about you? I mean, Emma Stone really showed her range this year. Last year, she played an Asian woman, and now she <laughs> could win an Oscar. Oh. <laughs> Having said all that, I still don't think that La La Land is a clear-cut favorite in this particular category. So I think Loving was so emotional. Yeah, it was. And Natalie Portman is Jackie. Don't sleep on these movies that sometimes they seem to be manufactured just to get an Oscar nomination, but there was a lot of heart and soul in Jackie. It was a weird movie. It was a very different take. It reminded me a lot of Steve Jobs, mm. which also got nominated for its acting performance, and I think that's what you're going to see this year, is it's going to be tough for Emma Stone to beat all that competition, and I'll say this about Meryl Streep as Double F Jenkins. Like, look, I, I don't know anymore. I don't know if we are taking her for granted. I don't want to do that because I hate when that happens in sports. I hate that Carl Malone won an MVP over Michael Jordan. That's ridiculous. And I don't want to see that happen to Meryl Streep just because she is the Streep monster. But Haley <laughs> Steinfeld was great in that just 17. Man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, she really was. I really would have loved to have seen her get nominated too. Okay, what do you think, Perry? I'm still in shock that we have brought up both The Rocker and uh, Aloha. and Aloha <laughs> in a conversation where Emma Stone is nominated for a Best Actress Oscar. But <laughs> for what it's worth, I would hand that Oscar right to her. I think that's her performance in that movie is the perfect example of someone who took a solid screenplay and just brought it to a whole nother level. Part of the reason that character's journey is special and meaningful in that movie is because of what she brought to it. Otherwise, it's just any old girl who had a dream and met a guy and tried to achieve it. But she makes it special. And, you know, if you hit that point in La La Land where audition comes up, and we'll probably discuss that later, but audition is hands down my favorite scene of all of 2017. Mm. That is just an incredible performance that she makes special. Then... 
I'm happy to see Ruth Nega because, you know, when Loving was coming out, everyone was talking about it. And now it just, like, I don't know if it just came out the wrong time or what, but nobody's talking about it anymore. And I think this might be the only, is this the only thing it was nominated for? Uh, of everything? I it, believe it, so. It yeah, might it was. be. Yeah, maybe. Which is very surprising to me. I grouped that with uh, a monster call. I'm absolutely shocked that a monster calls has not gotten nominated for a single thing i mean we'll, we'll get to supporting actors yeah. too but felicity jones could have been in there so i'm happy to see ruth nega getting some recognition here the one that i have my eye on though to possibly steal it from emma stone is natalie portman because yep. jackie was not my favorite movie but damn her performance I, that is just a great example of someone who has to be a hundred percent in character and committed from start to finish because the second she starts talking in that movie it's like you see natalie portman's face and you see a very different uh way she carries herself and a very different voice coming out of her mouth and you're looking and you're like oh that's not right and two seconds later she has you completely swept up in this world and you know that combined with the score and the cinematography too but she is excellent in that. So rooting for Emma Stone, but I, I don't know. I, th I think Natalie Portman could steal it out from under her. All right, and let's not forget about the other movie that really put Emma Stone on the map, House Bunny. Uh, let's <laughs> keep Can we also just say she was nominated for Birdman, too? That'll make oh, me I feel a little better. Yeah. Yeah. We, have yes. to, we have to talk about all the obscure things before this conversation <laughs> ends, Perry. This is where we need to go with it. All right, let's move on to the nominees for Best Actor. What do we got? Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea, Denzel Washington, Fences, Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge, Ryan Gosling, La La Land, and Viggo Mortensen, Captain Fantastic. Look, I'll be honest, I didn't think Ryan Gosling would get the nomination mm. this year. I thought he would get um, Blue Valentine again. Because remember that year when it was him and Michelle Williams, power couple on screen, they were amazing. Michelle Williams got the nomination and Ryan Gosling didn't. Uh, look, and Grosling, good Canadian kid, grew up about 45 minutes away from me. Um, good Canadian boy. I I think between him and Emma Stone, Emma Stone was the stronger of the two. This is just her year. So I thought Gosling would really get overlooked. He was terrific in the film. He was absolutely terrific. I'm just surprised. I don't have a problem with, with the fact that he's on here. I'm just surprised that he got it because I thought he was going to get overshadowed again. But... I, you know, Denzel was magnificent this year. Vigo, almost nobody saw Vigo in Captain Fantastic. He's incredible in it. But let's let's call it. This is Casey Affleck's award this year. I mean, what, what he did in Manchester by the Sea, which is a difficult movie to watch. It's a hard movie to watch, Manchester by the Sea. It's not like something you're going to sit down with a bowl of popcorn and have a great time watching. But you are just... Your eyes are magnetically connected to the screen because of I think of what Casey Affleck brought to that movie. So that's what I'm going to go with. What about you, Mark? I mean, it's sometimes what the Academy does like to do, though, is if they, they give a tiebreaker situation where if you look at Casey Affleck's performance in Manchester by the Sea, and let's say that that is tied with Denzel from Fences, and that is tied with Andrew Garfield and Hacksaw Ridge, who else this year had another amazing performance in a lead role? That was Andrew Garfield in Silence. So that could tip the scales ever so slightly if it comes down to that many votes. And this is a very competitive category. And let's not forget that Ryan Gosling is right there, too. I think Viggo Mortensen, that's like, it's congratulations on getting nominated. I don't think he's got a chance in hell of winning, even though he's a fantastic actor. I think it's going to be between those other four. I don't count out Gosling or Denzel or Andrew Garfield, but I have to agree. I think Casey Affleck's going to take it. Schnapp. I would say because of uh, the media storm that surrounded Casey Affleck that he probably, like Mel Gibson, is not going to right. win the award right. because of not having anything to do with his performance mm -hmm. in the film. Uh, but myself, personally, I think Denzel Washington did an incredible, incredible performance, not only directing Fences, but acting in it. And doing that dual take of being the main, the lead star, and also directing it, I think is a really hard task to do. And it was it was effortless. I didn't. I was watching the movie, and then when it ended, the title directed by Denzel Washington, I didn't know he directed it as well. <laughs> so it was kind of a stunner to me, because I was so invested in the film and wanting to see it. So I'd say for myself, it's between uh, Ryan Gosling and him. And I'd say Denzel, at least for me, I, Ryan Gosling did an incredible job. I'm glad he's nominated. But for myself, I think Denzel deserves it. This, what do you think, Perry? this list here is the SAG list, so I can't say I was surprised by a single right. one of these nominations. <laughs> but I think it's pretty much down to Gosling and 
Casey Affleck. There is, regardless of how I feel about La La Land, there is a lot of love for that movie right now. And yeah. I really wouldn't be surprised if they take the two Best Actor awards mm -hmm. here. If I could swap anyone, the one that I feel most strongly about and is not getting any recognition for this movie at all, pretty much, is Jake Gyllenhaal in Nocturnal Animals. I feel like when that movie right. was began its marketing campaign and was sold to audiences, it was sold as an Amy Adams star. No, it is yeah. his movie, and he does such mm -hmm. good work in that. There's other great performances as well, but... Right. I really think he should have been in the best actor discussion a little more so than he had been. And yeah, Andrew Garfield, if, if there was any surprise win, I would think it might be Andrew Garfield. Pretty much, I believe you brought it up, because of the Hacksaw Ridge and Silence thing. Both of those performances are worth a best actor yeah. nomination. And the fact that he has two things backing him up. I mean, I know that, you know, strictly as far as this list goes, it says he was nominated for Hacksaw Ridge. Again, I, I think we've brought this up a number of times. Living, breathing human beings voting on an award. So they don't have to say in their mind, oh, just think about Hacksaw Ridge. You think about both. So that could push him over the edge. It is interesting that while uh, somebody can be nominated in multiple categories in a year and multiple actors can be nominated from the same film in the same category, one person cannot be no nominated multiple times in the same category. So it would have been interesting. I was curious if Andrew Garfield was going to get the nomination for Hacksaw Ridge or Silence because he can't be nominated for both, I'm thrilled that they went with Hacksaw Ridge. This is the best validation of the snub he got for what I thought he should not only have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor when he was in The Social Network, he should have won that mm -hmm. year. Instead, they gave it to Christian Bale, who was magnificent, but clearly should have been in the Best Lead Actor category that year. But anyway... Enough's enough. I <laughs> just love seeing him in here. What do you think? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I was. I was thinking like, oh, the the uh, silence, and then we have Hacksaw Ridge, and then the back pay for Social Network. Also, you remember when uh, the back silence pay. trailer, <laughs> the silence trailer came out? We were all like, give him the nominations now. And it's like yeah. silence is pretty MIA in this yeah, entire really thing. Is, That's yep. really fascinating to me. Um, I I don't know a human being who has seen Casey Affleck in Manchester by the Sea who hasn't said nope he's gonna get the the Oscar nomination. I defer to the people smarter than me like Mark Ellis over there, so I gotta go with that. Uh, Denzel, I didn't know he directed it too. That's that's really fascinating about that. And that whole uh, starring in it and directing in it that worked for Mel Gibson in the past pre answering machine, so that's good. Uh, but Ryan, machine. yeah, like watch this. Ryan Gosling was great in La La Land because La La Land was a good movie. Perry's smiling right now. It works every time, guys. I'm just saying. Uh, but no, he was really great. But it also is the dynamic between him and Emma Stone. So I want to see if one wins, does the other win? Is it a symbiotic relationship that's bound to the Oscars? I don't know. But it's a, it's like a fascinating social study for me. But I'm really glad that you brought up the fact it's like people vote for the Oscars. Right. They're human beings. They're not robots. So these things can happen. Hey, Jeremy, you just I think you nailed it because that sometimes happens when sweeps happen is because all of the performances we've been talking about are amazing, but people are going to vote for La La Land because they enjoyed it so much, and then they're going to vote for the couple because that's the reason they enjoyed the movie. So right. it's going to probably sweep Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Picture. It's just going to, it's got 14 nominations. It's probably going to get 12 Oscars. It is, a, it's a fascinating yeah. thing. And like in a world where it's like Casey Affleck, like you said, it's like the harder movie to watch, but people love positivity, and La La Land is a positive movie. So I'm interested where that goes. I am really shocked that more people aren't nominated for Hell or High Water. Look, yeah. I put it as the movie that I would bump for Deadpool. That's not saying the movie's not great. It's not saying the movie isn't acted superbly. Everyone in that movie deserves something. I know we're getting to it a little bit, but uh, I, I'm just shocked that there's not more. Mm. Okay, uh, you know, it, this would be an interesting time considering we've talked about how Emma Stone is nominated for Best Actress, Ryan Gosling for Best Actor. Neither of these two were originally even supposed to be in the movie. Yeah, right. The original leads, this is true, the original leads for La La Land were Emma Watson and Miles Teller. Wow. Uh, they were the leads. Emma Watson decided to ditch it to go and do Beauty and the Beast, which was probably uh, not a mistake yeah, because that movie is. And, uh, and I believe Miles Teller uh, ended up departing because they couldn't agree on salary mm -hmm. for it. And so then we ended up with uh, Plan B. Plan B turned out pretty good. All <laughs> you right, let's move. Seen, you should have seen Perry's face right there. <laughs> about that. All right, let's move on to the category of Best Supporting Actress. Ashley, what do we got? Viola Davis, Fences. Michelle Williams, Manchester by the Sea. Naomi Harris, Moonlight. Nicole Kidman, Lion. And Octavia Spencer, Hidden Figures. 
Oh, wow. Okay, first of all, I believe this is the second time that both uh, Octavia Spencer and Olivia Davis have been nominated uh, in the same year because they were both in The Help together, mm -hmm. and Help is one of my favorite movies. I just love mm -hmm. that movie so much. Um, wow, you just rearranged her the letters of her yeah, name. Yeah, Viola. You said but, Olivia. But like, Did I say very, Olivia? Yeah, it was very oh, common. I'm sorry. sorry but, if you, but if you rearranged yeah, it, because it was so Octavia. So it was like Octavia. Octavia. <laughs> Octavia. Okay, anyway, um, amazing. Uh, this, oh my God. I, look, I, I never thought, because I didn't even think the movie looked any good. I think this one I give to Octavia Spencer. Mm. I, I, I actually think I give this one to Octavia Spencer. And that's not just a back pay check kind of idea, as you, <laughs> you so cleverly put. I, I, the, these ones, Davis was amazing in yeah. Fences. Now, Michelle Williams, we were just talking about her in Blue Valentine. She's incredible all the time. But in Manchester by the Sea, Naomi Harrison, Moonlight, Nicole Kidman in Lion. But... Uh, for me, I'm going to go Octavia Spencer. I'm going to, and I know she's not the favorite, but she's going to be my dark horse, my outside shot on this one. What do you think, Mark? I mean, Nicole Kidman has not disappointed me in a movie since she played Doctor Chase Meridian. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, uh, but but I don't have her as the front runner, and I don't have Octavia Spencer as the front runner. I'm glad they got nominated. Personally, I think the best performance in Hidden Figures was from Janelle Monae. I thought she stole that entire movie. I agree. And I and I love Octavia Spencer, but I think if there's one person who's going to get nominated from Hidden Figures. It should have been Janelle Monet and Tarashi P. Henson was mm -hmm. great in that movie as well. So they, they were all so good in that film. But I think this is between Viola Davis, Naomi Harris, and Michelle Williams. And I got to tell you, Michelle Williams, I walked out of Manchester by the Sea saying she's not only getting nominated, she's winning. But then I saw Moonlight, and Harris has such a haunting performance in that movie. That might have stuck with me a little bit more than Michelle Williams. Then you put on Fences and you see what Viola Davis is able to do opposite Denzel Washington in a film that is so reliant on her performance. This is one of the toughest ones to call. I'm going to just pull one at random and say Naomi Harris, but any one of these three ladies, I'd be happy to see them win. How would you guys feel about me saying this? I think out of all the major categories, this is the tightest race. Yes, yes this I is agree. The, this is the toughest one. I think this is a coin toss. From, <laughs> like, you can make an argument for almost any one of these winning, and I would not put money on this category at, at all. Schnapp, which ones stand out to you Also, here? I'm glad you mentioned Janelle Monae because she was also incredible in Moonlight. It was like right, she had a double right. header, and oh, I didn't right. even realize that it was the same actress. Holly mm -hmm. had to be like, that's the same actress yeah. we just saw. I was like, oh, my God, because she was, did a, such a transformative role. So it's a bummer to not see her in here. But I got to go with Vi Viola Davis. I thought, especially because just if you add up the sheer screen time, she has the most screen time of all of the actresses on board, and she delivers the most emotional, raw uh, performance that I saw in any of the films, so I'd have to give it to her. What do you think? Yeah, Viola Davis, I think, won everyone over in the trailer alone. Remember when the teaser trailer mm. happened? Oh, yeah. We were like, oh my gosh, right. that's like heart wrenching. It was like a minute. I was and here half. with you, right? Yeah. The whole oh, thing, she's crying. I mean, it was just, it was like 90 seconds long. We were all like <laughs> on, on movie talk, like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm emotional <laughs> all of a sudden. Right, yeah, but uh, I agree with you about Octavia Spencer in the sense that her character was an unexpected. Yeah. You know, because she takes on her own project. Right. She's like, hey, we. so it shows a symbiotic. I always say symbiotic on here for some odd reason when we're talking Oscars and people being connected. But it does show the relationship. Venom. You're thinking about <laughs> yeah, I am Venom. thinking of the Venom symbiote. What can I you're say? You're thinking <laughs> of the Naboo and the Gungans. That's what you're thinking I was thinking just going to say, do you, because I, I never knew that was a word before I saw Phantom Menace nine times in a theater. Now I drop it once a day like Jeremy Johns. <laughs> No one has thought about the Nabu. And the That's right. For I'm, I'm bummed out that you brought that up because now I'm thinking about midi chlorians. Yeah. Thanks, dude. It's, <laughs> it's Eddie Brock and the alien symbiote. Way That's to go, to Ellis. Say. Oscars, Oscars, Oscars. But to my point, thank you, Perry, for getting us on track. The true professional, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to my point, it is. Uh, it does show that it's not just an actor and what they bring. It's what their character does in the movie yeah. that like latches you on. You're like, oh, man, I'm there with you in your quest because you're doing a thing. And what she did in that movie, I thought was... You could make a whole movie in and of itself of what she's doing, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, in that, she she is like you said. I mean, she she's an unexpected turn, but uh, Viola Davis and Fences from the trailer alone, my friends, um, <laughs> just just kicked everyone right in the stomach. It was great. All right, what do you think, Perry? Yeah, this is the category that stresses me out most. Uh, so when when Octavia Spencer and Viola Davis got nominated for the help, Viola was in the lead category. Octavia yes. won mm -hmm. for supporting, but Octavia Spencer was also against Jessica Chastain for that same movie yeah. that year. <laughs> anyway, Octavia Spencer walked off with the Oscar. I think it's a crime that Viola Davis has yet to win an Oscar at Agreed. this point mm -hmm. because 
I think she certainly could have won it for The Help and for Doubt could've. also. She's fantastic in everything she's in. And that's part of the reason why I took Fences off the best picture list if I had to take something off is because I think there's many reasons that that movie is a great movie, but the primary reason is the performances, is Viola Davis and Denzel Washington. And that's why I think the movie should be honored in those categories, perhaps a little more so for her than him, strictly because of the competition in the category, but Naomi Harris is also so fantastic in Moonlight, so I'm a little torn. If, if I had a pick between the two of them, I don't know if I could do that right now until I watch both movies again, but I'm going to do that, and I'll come up with a decision eventually because they're great. You know, you bring up a good point about, uh, you know, Viola Davis has not won an Oscar yet. Maybe that's what's going to put, put her over the edge. But if you look at DiCaprio last year, his performance in The Revenant was not his best performance, but that's the one he won mm. in because DiCaprio had yet to win an Oscar. So that could be a thing that brings Viola Davis over where it's like, oh, she hasn't won one. She should have. It's there you crazy. go, like Andrew I, Garfield. I'm actually just surprised that you're not making an argument that Emma Stone's third roommate in the blue dress wasn't nominated no. for Best Supporting Actress <laughs> for as, La La Land. As much as I love La La Land, uh, there's really no supporting. No, I mean, except there John isn't. Legend, maybe. There's no supporting performances in that movie. It's a movie about them. You know what's really weird is that Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield were both in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> what's really is weird <laughs> is that Fences is actually a backstory for Amanda Waller in Suicide Squad. Ooh. <laughs> That's Oh. Yeah, it's a shared universe, kids. Look it up. <laughs> All right, let's move on now to the last of the acting categories, the Best Supporting Actor nominees. What do we got, Ashley? Mahershala Ali, Moonlight. Jeff Bridges, Hell or High Water. Dev Patel, Lion. Lucas Hedges, Manchester by the Sea. And Michael Shannon, Nocturnal Animals. I am uh, one of those guys. That I'm not a huge Nocturnal Animals fan. Uh, I, I honestly didn't even think it was even all that watchable. But Michael Shannon should win the award for this thing because when he, <laughs> that dude's on screen and he's playing that character, I was just, he's the supporting character, but I was wishing he was in the movie even more. Uh, he stole it every time, every second I was watching that with him on screen, I was in there. And the chemistry that him and, uh, 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 well, I mean, Jalen Hall, yeah. that, that him and General Hall, their, their chemistry together on screen was mm -hmm. insane. So look, Dev Patel is for real. He ain't just the slumdog millionaire kid anymore. He was for real. All these guys completely deserving. Jeff Bridges was incredible in Hell or High Water. Uh, but for me, it's, uh, it's, it's Michael Shannon. What do you think, Mark? Uh, as a nocturnal animal myself, I am rooting for Michael Shannon in this category. But I got to tell you, I, I think Mahershala Ali is, in Moonlight, that's the film I saw after Nocturnal Animals. And I, had, I was convinced that it was Shannon's award to lose. And he might have lost it with how good Ali was in Moonlight. But don't forget about Jeff Bridges either. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Bridges, I, I think it's a, it's a three-horse race here. And it's another one that looks too close to call. It's the supporting actor and actresses this year are the tightest races, in my opinion. I don't think it's a lock that any of them win. But if I had to guess, I think it's going to be Ali. I would not be upset with any one of those three guys I just mentioned winning it. What do you think, Perry? There's just so many great categories this year. I mean, obviously, I'm a little sad about Sing Street, but really, every single thing, I find myself saying, I wouldn't be so disappointed if so-and-so won. So really, every single person on this list gave an incredible performance. Mahershala, Mahershala la, 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 I will say it right <laughs> eventually. Um, he's fantastic in it, and he has so little screen time, too, so the fact that he makes that much of an impression really says something about his work in that movie. I'm very happy about Jeff Bridges because he's one of my favorite parts about Hell or High Water. However, one of my other favorite parts was Ben Foster. Mm -hmm. So, oh, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I think about so Ben good. Foster potentially getting a nomination, th that bums me out a little. And Lucas Hedges, I hope people mm -hmm. continue to talk about him because you guys know how torn up I was about uh, the young boy in, uh, uh, in our room last year not getting a nomination. Mm, right. So... It kind of feels like Lucas Hedges is is kind of leading the young actor charge because this year A Monster Calls was also completely overlooked and uh, Lewis McDougal in that, another example of someone who delivered incredible work and really should be getting recognition at this right, point. Right. Uh, Dev Patel, he's great. I'm happy to see him get his first Oscar, his <laughs> first acting nomination. And then Michael Shannon. I'm thrilled to see Michael <laughs> Shannon get a nomination. 
I love Nocturnal Animals. It was one of my top 10 of 2016. I think it's fantastic. The only thing that has me torn up about that one is that Aaron Taylor Johnson, I really think he was excellent too. And it's, it's not that I have to choose between two actors just because right. they're in the same movie, but you know, I guess Hell or High Water and Nocturnal Animals couldn't have stolen four of the five spots. That probably would have been impossible. Jeremy. You know what's great about this? This really does show how important the supporting cast is, you know? Because, like, you look at Best Actor and Actress, we were like, ah, oh, it's down to those two. You know, it's down to those two. This one, like, in the supporting, we're like, I don't know. I don't know who's... This is where I'm going to lose 10 bucks on the betting pool. Uh, but um, I'm with you about Nocturnal Animals. Nocturnal Animals, I thought was fine. It was interesting, but my head didn't explode over it. But Michael Shannon in Nocturnal Animals, for me, made Nocturnal Animals. Uh, Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water, I liked him. But, I mean, if I had a gun to my head and I had to choose between him and Ben Foster, I would have given Ben Foster the nomination, personally. Yeah. I just think mm. Ben Foster's one of the best actors working right now, and not everyone sees it. I just... I I want them to. So, I mean, but for me, in this entire list, I'm looking at uh, Michael Shannon because he completely made the movie what the movie was. And, you know, I thought he had, I thought Ben Foster had two chances this year, like right. for Hell or High Water and for uh, Warcraft. Uh, I <laughs> thought his performance in <laughs> Warcraft, uh, yeah, could have put him in. Especially <laughs> when, he, when he turned into that giant 40 foot demon. Yeah. Look, and man, he's just one of the best workers. <laughs> right. oh, I like Ben I Foster. I love me some Ben Foster. You know that. Right. Anyway, he was in think? a different movie. He was the one actor in Warcraft who was like, well, he's acting in a different film. Yeah. But anyway. I feel Love like ben there's Foster. a good drinking game to be played with every time we've mentioned a not so good movie <laughs> in this Oscar conversation. Would it, would it entail Foster's beer? Um, you know what? I think actually Ben Foster should have not been in the sub supporting actor role. He should have been in the lead actor role because yeah, both that him, him and Pine, Pine were, were lead leads. actors. Yeah. So you can't really yeah. shovel them into supporting actors because they weren't. But uh, for me, it's Jeff Bridges or Mah Mahershala Ali. And Mahershala was also in uh, Hidden Figures. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of amazing crossovers. Where Another example where he did so much with very little screen yeah. time. Yeah, so I mean, I would have to give it to Mahershala I can't say his name, Mahershala Ali, because he did such a phenomenal job in Moonlight. He really grounded that film. Uh, just like some of the other actors who, you know, because we go through time with the lead actor, but he's the constant. So I felt like his role was fantastic. I love Jeff Bridges, but I have to give it to Marshalla. And we here at Quieter want to remind you, if you are playing Perry's drinking game, please drink responsibly. And also, Judd Hirsch <laughs> in Independence in Day 2 Resurgence. I mean, Jeez. how was he not nominated for Best Supporting Actor? When I just he picks felt a regurgence. <laughs> yeah, that scene where he picks oh, that kids are so good. So emotional. All right, guys, oh. so we're going to jump down now to uh, a category that's near and dear to my heart the category of best animated film. What are nominated this year? Zootopia, Moana, Kubo and the Two Strings, The Red Turtle, and My Life as a Zucchini. Uh, no big... One of the little surprises here was that uh, Dory. Pixar did not yeah. get a nomination year, this year. Dory didn't get nominated, and I'm fine with that. I'm totally cool with that. To me, the best animated film of the year, I've said this many times, I think is Moana. I think there's so much more to, to Moana than what you think there is right on the surface. It's powerful. It's moving. I absolutely adored it. Uh, Jeremy, what's, what about to you? Yeah, it, it gun to my head between Moana and Kubo and the Two Strings. I go Kubo and the Two Strings, but if either of those two wins, and I do think it's down to those two, I'd be totally fine. I am going to say Moana. However, before this conversation, I was very torn. But now that I know that Kubo has a VFX nomination, <laughs> that makes me feel a little better about going with Moana. However, I also feel like Zootopia got snubbed in the screenplay category. So I wish that got in there, too, because Zootopia is fantastic. Mark. John, to quote every local news anchor right now talking about this category, well, Jade, we're still looking for Dory. <laughs> however, <laughs> Kubo and the Two Strings and Moana are the front runners. Moana the more important film. Kubo and the Two Strings. I think a little more imaginative. I'm going with Kubo and the two strings. Let's go to weather. Snap. Well, in, in weather, weather, it's still raining here in California, <laughs> and I disagree with Ellis. Zootopia is the one that should win. Wow. Or my life is a I'm going to fight you afterwards. Well, my life is a vegetable. I don't know. I've never heard of the film. I'm going to have to watch that, but I can't vote for it, so Zootopia. All right, now let's move on to the category. Another one near and dear to my heart, Best Visual Effects. Actually, what was nominated? Deepwater Horizon, The Jungle Book, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, Whee. Doctor Strange, and Kubo and the Two Strings. This one is crazy <laughs> cool. First of all, Deepwater Horizon. And I think that one caught a lot of people off guard. But Mark Ellis brought up a great point this morning. You're watching that movie, you don't realize how much of that was visual effects. Mm. And it was flawless. I don't see how Jungle Book doesn't win. I don't right. see. I mean, super happy for, for that Rogue One got nominated. Completely imaginative effects in Doctor Strange. 
But Jungle Book was a game changer right. from a technical point of view. I got to go with that one. Mark, what about bum, you? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I love Rogue One to death. Uh, I don't think it's going to be Rogue One. It might be another Disney property. Doctor Strange, very excited to see those effects get nominated because they took you to another dimension entirely, and that was kind of the point of the movie. But I'm going to also second you and say The Jungle Book. What about you, Perry? <laughs> Even though I'm happy to see Kubo is the first stop-motion <laughs> animated movie nominated for this award since Nightmare Before Christmas, I don't think anything is touching the Jungle Book. Jungle Book all the way. Jeremy. Yep, uh, filmed on location in a Hollywood studio the <laughs> entire time, not in a jungle. That kid was on a green screen the entire time. It was next-level stuff. Uh, I mean, Jungle Book, like you said, it was a game-changer. Nothing but the kid was real. Um, and you couldn't tell. Uh, also, uh, shout out to Deepwater Horizon. I, I was like, oh, what, special effects? I, did, I couldn't tell what was visual effects and what wasn't, but that said, Jungle Book. The sweaty nerd in me is forcing me to say Doctor Strange, but I have to go with Jungle Book. Doctor Strange had the next level films. I mean, we talked about how that is actually the, worth seeing in 3D IMAX yeah. to experience that. And I loved how we went to different dimensions. But the greatest thing about Jungle Book is you forget that you're watching an effect the entire movie is yeah. in effect, and that you it's so seamless in many ways when wolves are just simply talking in English that you just forget how incredible <laughs> everything is that you're seeing. None of it's real. So because of just the, the sheer magician, magic sorcery ship that beats Doctor Strange because it's an entire effect that's invisible. All right, guys, now we're going to go over one more category. There's so many more. We could go on for hours. Like We didn't even talk about the, the best screenplays. We didn't talk about cinematography. We haven't talked about the documentaries, but we are running out of time. We want to make sure we get time for you guys. Start fire, firing in your questions if you're watching us live. Follow us on Twitter, at Collider Video, and start sending in your thoughts on the Oscar nominations, your questions about the Oscar nominations. Send them on in. We are going to stick to Oscar stuff today, but start sending those questions in right now. We're going to talk about one more category, a magical category, if you will, <laughs> one that I love as a part of the Oscars, but I wish they wouldn't actually perform them at the Oscars, but that's Best Original Song. So, Ashley, what's nominated for Original Song this year? Audition, The Fools Who Dream, La La Land, City of Stars, La La Land, how Far I'll Go, Moana, Can't Stop the Feeling, Trolls, and The Empty Chair, Jim, The James Foley Story. Look, I actually think, I, I, what was at the Golden Globes, what was it, that, was it, um, it was City of Stars that I think won mm -hmm. for best song at the Golden Globes, which was funny because that's not the best song in La La Land. Mm -hmm. uh, the best song is probably Audition, but... And for me, in Moana, the best song in Moana didn't get nominated, which is You're Welcome, that was performed mm. by The Rock. But How Far I'll Go, I'll admit, uh, probably three out of the last seven days that I've driven to the office, I've turned on How Far I'll Go in, mm. in the office. The, it's a powerful, <laughs> You live like two song. blocks from the office. Why would you play song. How Far I'll Go if you have to drive <laughs> two blocks to the office? It's been raining a lot. Okay? I, mean, I took the long way around. It's uh, amazing for me. Um, I would actually, I would go with How Far I'll Go. I mean, Can't Stop the Feeling is actually a great, catchy song that Justin Timberlake did as well, and that's great. But I would personally go How Far I'll Go. Audition will win. I think Audition will win, but I would go with the Moana song. What about you? I think Audition should win. I suspect a La La Land song will win, which will obviously make me happy. However, this is another situation where we have two songs from the same movie going yeah. up against each other when there's only one Moana song. However, this is the category that has me most torn up about a snub because this is where I had my fingers crossed oh so tightly that Sing Street would pop up. Sing it, Perry. You, mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you, keep, you drive and listen to Moana. When I ran that race for two hours, half of that playlist was La La Land and Sing Street. Those songs are good. And I'm not just talking, you know, catchy, fun, musical movie mm. good. Those songs deserve, so a couple of them deserve to be nominated. I really thought uh, Drive It Like You Stole It could have gotten in there, mm. so... Mark. Yeah, Sing Street kicked the most ass this year, but if I have to choose from the five that are actually nominated, I think Moana has a puncher's chance. La La Land is going to win for something. I think Audition was great. I think that might have been an incredible scene for Emma Stone to showcase her abilities, no but I kidding. think City of Stars is the one that should and is going to win. 
All right. Yeah, it's a it's a case of La La Land is a musical that has best music while it's uh, while it's up for best picture and best actor supporting actor. The music is a backbone of this story. If it doesn't win and win the musical category, I would just find that some bit of irony. One of the two La La Land uh, songs I would imagine are going to win. And if we're not getting to best screenplay, we're not talking about screenplay today. Shout out to Deadpool and Edge of Seventeen. You should have been in there. Snap. City of Stars. <laughs> there we go. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, but that's the one that's going to win. Oh, I'm sorry. One more snub for song. Sure. Running from Hidden Figures. Pharrell song. Oh, okay. Yet, yet oh, another yeah. one that is on my playlist. I love the producer on Hidden the film. Figures was a great soundtrack. Film. It was yeah. written for the film, and it is an example of a song that one is a good standalone song you can mm-hmm. listen to, and two plays perfectly in the movie. So and a also, little bum that's not even included. though it was set in the '60s and it had modern music, it worked flawlessly. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to get to your Twitter questions. I'm just going to run through just the nominees, at least, for screenplay. Best original screenplay nominees, of course, were La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, Hell or High Water, The Lobster, and 20th Century Women. Not a lot of big surprises there. Best adapted screenplay. Have to bring this up because Deadpool's shocked the world a little bit by getting nominated for Best Adaptive Screenplay by the Writers Guild of America, Mm -hmm. which made us, and then it was nominated for Best Picture by the Producers Guild of America, and it got nominated for Best Adaptive Screenplay at the Golden Globes. So we actually started thinking, there's a shot here Mm -hmm. that Deadpool could get nominated for Best Adaptive Screenplay. It did not. What was nominated, all worthy nominees, Moonlight, well, except for Arrival, uh, (laughs) Lion, Fences, (laughs) And Hidden Figures uh, were all nominated, so congrats to them. And it should be pointed out as well that we can all collectively celebrate the Oscar-nominated film Suicide Squad, (laughs) which did get an Oscar nomination for, I believe it was Hair and Makeup. I think Suicide Squad got one for theirs. All right, so with all that... Again, there's a lot of categories we've left out, but we are running out of time, so we want to get to your Twitter questions. Wendy, what are people saying in Twitter? First one comes from Daniel, who writes, if Split came out earlier this year uh, between October and November, do you think McAvoy would have had a chance for an Oscar nom? Yeah, you know, a lot of people have been bringing that up. Um, Mark, what do you think? Uh, I mean... Like, considering, like, let's say it came out in November, yeah. and look at the crop of actors who were nominated for Best Actor. Does Casey Affleck, Denzel Washington, Andrew Garfield, Ryan Gosling, or Viggo Mortensen get bumped out for McAvoy and Split? I mean, you could put all them combined, and McAvoy still was 18 more people than they were <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> I probably would have bumped out Vigo if I had to take somebody out, but it's tough, man. I mean, McAvoy's great in that movie. He does something really, truly special, but I would be totally cool with him just being left off. What do you think? Yeah, is I I can't qualify. I I don't think the Oscars would have not. I don't think he would have been nominated for an Oscar. But I myself, if I had some sort of power to vote for somebody, I would have voted for him if that means anything. So I mean, I, I, which it doesn't. But I, I, he was really phenomenal. The movie surprisingly, surprisingly good. Any other thoughts? Nope. Nope, if I took anyone out, it would probably be Vigo, and I would trade him for Jake Gyllenhaal, and I don't think the the voting body of the, the Academy would ever give him a nomination. However, I think he's fantastic in the movie. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, we could I would substitute Ben Foster or even Pine. So, All right, what's next? Sonny Etchell writes, Thoughts on Amy Adams not getting any nomination for Arrival or Nocturnal Animals? She... Definitely didn't deserve one for Nocturnal Animals. I mean, th- th- and that's through no fault of her own. It wasn't. A, it's just that it was a character that was written very, and so there's there wasn't a lot of dynamic range mm. there to to show anything. I also felt the same way about her character in her Arrival. Look, Amy Adams is a terrific actress. I love her and adore. I think she's fantastic, and she's going to have more statues on her on her mantle before her career is over. But um, I didn't think she deserved a nomination in either of those. I'm so glad this came up in Twitter because I was mad at myself for not bringing it up when we were talking about Best Actress. I do not think she deserved a nomination for Nocturnal Animals. I think she's good in it. But like I said before, I think the movie was marketed as her movie, and it wasn't her movie. Yeah. So I don't think she should have been in that category regardless of how good her performance was. I thought she was excellent in Arrival, and she's a big part of the reason why that movie's so great. I mean, think about all the crazy things that happen in that movie, and I keep saying this when I talk about the movie. I normally like straightforward things that I could completely wrap my head around. 
the concept behind arrival is not something you can fully understand, but part of the reason you get close to understanding it is because of what she conveys, what she conveys mm-hmm. as a scientist and what she conveys as a human being. And that is one heck of an achievement. If I wouldn't want to take anyone out of that's that category. The, yeah, that's always that's, the hard part, right? That's is part, that I mean, a bump? I mean, I, I, I would maybe swap Meryl for Amy Adams. What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't think I can swap Meryl for Amy Adams simply because I, look, she was an emotional powerhouse and a rival for sure. But it just it, it in another year I could have seen it. Nocturnal Animals. Perry's right. It was a it was a strange movie anyway in the way it told its story, which added to the enjoyment of it for me. But Amy Adams is the lead in that movie. But the screen time she has and what she's asked to do is feels more like a best supporting actress contender so it's just a confusing thing if you're voting on it. Yeah. I mean the, the, we're voting on art here we're not voting on something that is easily quantifiable so I think for that reason she got left off best supporting actress which is another stacked category already do you guys think she'd have been nominated for either yeah, one of them yeah I would have I would have taken out uh, Natalie Portman and put in Amy Adams for arrival without a second blink yeah, uh, I agree. Of the two, it'll be a rival. And every time someone says something about the street monster, she <laughs> comes down in a bolt of lightning. You're lucky she's still asleep right now, Perry. That's what you're saying. But uh, yeah, she literally is still asleep. She does not get out of bed anymore <laughs> yeah. when she gets nominated. Yeah, right? She just like uh, astral projects it's... herself into her roles. Uh, but yeah, if I had to do one, it would be uh, a rival. All right, what's next? Uh, Eric Tish writes. La La Land ties the Oscar nomination record with 14. The win record is 11. Mm. Can La La Land tie or break it? Can it? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's got a shot. Yeah. It, it really does. Not just because of the sheer number of nominations it has. It has a shot. I don't think it will. I think it's going to come in around the eight, mm. which is an insane number yeah. of Academy yeah. Awards for a movie to go home with. I think it's going to come in around the eight number. Uh, but look, don't. Don't bet against it. I, I don't see it. I absolutely don't see it getting like 12 or 13. But uh, 11, tying that record, is a possibility, Mark. It could certainly take a lot of these major awards we've been talking about on the show. It could certainly take Best Picture, both lead actor roles. Uh, you could see it doing, obviously, the musical score one. But I think there's a lot of smaller categories that it's nominated for, that there's just so many good Oscar-contending films in 2016 that came out that I think that some of those, even if they might not deserve it over La La Land, are going to be makeup calls. And it's nice to see other films get recognized. So La La Land will have a nice haul, just not a record-breaking one. Any, anybody think that it has a chance of breaking the record? I was joking earlier, like, oh, it's going to make 12, it's 14 nominations, it's going to win 12. I don't think it's going to win 12 just because, like, what you're talking about, this that's stacked with so much other um, the other amazing films. But I think it'll probably win seven easily. Yeah, it'll win a few. I was looking at the poster. The poster is the two of them with all that space. That space is there for all the all the Oscar wins on the Blu-ray box, folks. So it's going to win a few. But uh, the record, I don't know. I think it might tie it. That's... Mm. That's what I'm betting on at this yeah. point, but that's before any of the Guild Awards have been given out. I think that's going to give us a better sense of right. what the possibilities are. But, I mean, we are talking about one of the happiest and I think most widely beloved of everything. So, I mean, just think about when you're voting for different categories. You're going to check off the one you're most likely to have seen. So I, I think that I think it's got a good shot. Clearly, I want it to have a good shot. <laughs> All right, what's next? Do you think this nomination of Mal Gibson will allow him to get in front of the camera more and increase his job offers? That's a good. Here's the here's the funny thing about about Gibson. Uh, and we're talking about Expendables three. <laughs> he was awesome in Expendables three. <laughs> like that scene when he's in the truck talking about I'm going to rip open your chest and wear you like a meat jacket. Like that. Like he's so good in that movie. I I don't know because. You know, Hollywood, I think at one point, being ready to move on. I mean, he's, he spent seven years in Hollywood jail. Uh, <laughs> for, let him move on behind the camera and do what he does best, which is direct. Is a little bit different than maybe the public at large being willing to have him come back and say being the lead in, in several things. So I don't remember, he's still been working, like in front of uh, the camera and smaller stuff. Actually, the, the, what, the blood father. I mean, which was really good. Yeah, which is really good, and he was so good in it. 
Um, I just don't know if you're going to see that kind of research. Do you guys think any differently? I would like you to not forget his classic role in Machete Kills also, John. He was fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe I was about to say that. Oh, you got, I, I was going to say because he brought up Expendables 3. I was like, <laughs> yeah. we got to talk about the horrible role of Machete 2, which is a garbage film. <clears throat> Amazingly, Machete 1 was Oscar winning. <clears throat> here's, the, here's the weird thing, though, is that if the question is, is he going to be back in front of the camera in an Oscar contending performance? I think there's a very high likelihood of that. He was even great when Jodie Foster directed him in the beaver like, like he was, he's no he was really he good can that. be still good I, he's never going to be the marketable he's never going to be the guy on the marquee like what women want just like oh that's <laughs> mel we're gonna <laughs> yeah, right. see him. Right. you're not gonna see that kind of stuff right. from him anymore but he's a different age now he's in a different place in life for which I, he won four academy awards Hashtag alternative facts. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a worth. This would be a worthwhile conversation whether or not he got that nomination. Because the truth of the matter is, he still made a fantastic movie this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's also the kind of guy in this industry that can make his own opportunities. Mm -hmm. He yep. can get things produced. I'm yeah. sure he could talk to someone and get his face in a movie if he wanted to. So. I wouldn't be surprised if I would we saw actually, more Mel Gibson now. I was going to say I'd prefer to see less Mel Gibson and see him more directing. Because mm -hmm. I think yeah. he's an incredible yeah. director and that he's transitioned from being an actor in front of the camera to being a director. I think I'd want to see more films. I think maybe a good directing. start would just be the actual movie when it's selling itself to tell us that it's directed by Mel Gibson. Because whenever you saw a Hacksaw Ridge trailer in the theaters, yeah, right. it was from the director first. of Braveheart right. and Passion of the Christ and Apocalypto. It was not from Mel Gibson. Right. Yeah. And I think that might start to change now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take two more. Okay, Jonathan Peck writes, if Moana wins for best song, can Lin-Manuel Miranda be the youngest EGOT, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winner of all time? Oh, oh. I, I, I do not have that fact. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. I That's no idea. pretty interesting. It's a, it's Google, a, it's a John. Question. We must Google now. Yeah, uh, because for, it's all, uh, for here. all of you at home, Googleize it. Uh, but I simply do not know. Does any, any of you know? Sure. That's My answer is sure. Right That's a lot of stuff. And yeah. uh, he sounds like a young person. Sure. I, I agree. I'm going to say not only yes, but hell yes. However, <laughs> I don't think Moana is going to win that category. I think it's yeah. La La Land. Yeah. All right. Last question of the day. Last one comes from Brad, who writes, are you guys going to do a live Oscar party? Mm. E what do you say, Uncle John? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we are going to do a live Oscar party. Uh, the, the, the exact, it's funny because we were all just talking about this yesterday. The exact shape <clears throat> of, of what that will look like, we're not totally sure yet. But yeah, February 26th, mark it on your calendars. Make sure you join us right here on Clutter Video. We will be, join us for the Oscars. We're going to be doing stuff all through the Oscars. We're going to have live stream. We're going to have a pre show. We're going to have a post show wrap up. A pool. And we're going to have, yeah. a, we're definitely going to have Funny. a pool. And we are going to like a like a, a, a Oscar pool, not an actual swimming pool. Oh. We can have both. Although we, yeah, there's nothing that says we can't do both. Um, so make sure you join us for that. All right, guys, that'll do it uh, for this installment, this special, very early Oscar nominee installment of Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, look, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel right now. Click that little bell button as well to make sure you get updated and notified when new videos of ours goes up. And we got other videos coming out today. Keep your eyes open. I want to thank, first of all, the people sitting at this table with me, Mr. John Schnepp. Where can people find you online? Never this early in the morning again for me, <laughs> but uh, it was worth it. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Mr. Jeremy Johns. You can find me on YouTube and Twitter at Jeremy Johns. Generally speaking, on the internet, just type in Jeremy Johns. You'll find whatever you need. Sorry if you're going to Google Images. Hi, Mom. And you can also find me every <laughs> Friday, new episodes of my show, Awesome Tacular, on the Verizon Go90 network. We talk about all things fun and nerdy. Be there. It's a lot of fun. Of course, Ms. Perry Nemiroff. You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff. Collider Nightmares every Wednesday morning. And a new something special coming your way this weekend. Oh, something hey, hey. special. Okay, over there, Mr. Mark Ellis. Well, it's always something special when you get to see me at the Tempe Improv this weekend, <laughs> Thursday through Sunday. I'll be telling jokes about no less than three Oscar-nominated movies. Was Die Hard nominated for an Oscar? I hope so. I Should have been. Two and a half Oscar-winning <laughs> movies. <laughs> over there at that day, we got, of course, thank you guys for being here so early, Miss Ashley Mova. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy. I don't even know what to do. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Wendy Lee. Well, real quick, I looked up the EGOT thing. So the youngest winner was in, uh, it looks like 2014. It went to Robert Lopez for Frozen, who is 
38. So if Lin Manuel Miranda does win everything, then he will be the youngest one because he is right now 37. Okay. You can find me on YouTube um, at the Movie Couple channel and on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. I have no idea if I'm looking at the right camera or not. <laughs> and uh, you guys can just follow me on social media, follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, just at John Campia. Special thanks to you guys for joining us so early. Special thanks to our crew for being here so early. And we will see you again tomorrow. My name is John Campion. Until next time, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.